Hey, what's going on, fellas? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here. Today, answering your questions. Today's question is, what is it like to be released or sent down um, in the major leagues or minor leagues? Um, I wish I didn't know how to answer this question, uh, but unfortunately I do because I've been released twice in my eight-year career, and I was sent down in spring training from the major league team down to AAA probably three or four times. One, two, three, four times. And so I had a lot of experience of it happening to me. Um, so we'll talk about kind of how it takes place and also kind of what is going through the player's head or at least what was going through my head when it happened. Um, before we get into that, check out the description box below. Uh, I've got a link down there. We'll get you guys 50% off your first plate crate. Uh, click the link. It'll take you to their website. You'll be able to check it out, um, get more information. So definitely do that. Okay, let's kind of go in depth here on all the different scenarios of getting released and getting sent down and kind of the things that were said to me um, and kind of what I was thinking, what I was feeling, all that stuff. So, you know, very often for me, I, I was invited to Major League Spring Training a lot. Pretty early in my career, I got invited, um, you know, when I was 22, I think, um, and I made my debut, my Major League debut when I was 23 and so you know early in my career you know the first time I got sent down I was in major league camp you know I had a decent uh, camp but I had a pretty good idea I was going to get sent down to AAA it was my uh, let's see it was my first, I had played one year of of you know full season so it was my second full season and you know I, I had a pretty good idea that I wasn't going to make the team I was going to go play AAA and so when I got sent down, basically what happens is, you know, you, you show up one day and all of a sudden somebody comes by your locker. If you've seen like Hard Knocks, if you want, I love Hard Knocks. If you watch Hard Knocks, it's very similar to that. Like you'll be sitting at your locker and all of a sudden like you'll get a tap on the leg and it'll be like, hey, coach wants to see you. And you'll be like, all right. And you have a pretty good idea you're going down. Um, so you go in the office, you sit down, they close the door. It's usually like the manager, um, the general manager. Sometimes you might have a bench coach or an assistant coach in there, but it's always usually at least the manager and not always the GM. You know, I had instances when I was with the Padres, I had the GM in there a few times with some other teams that didn't have the GM in there. Um, and so they're just going to basically tell you like the reasons you're going down and kind of what to expect when you get down to AAA. Um, you know, one year I was actually told, I won't say who told to me, one of, the, one of my managers said, we don't like fat second baseman. I wasn't fat, but... I came in one year, we talked about this, you know, I hit 21 home runs one year and I said, you know, I probably weighed like 210, probably about 210, 213, somewhere around there. And so I was a pretty big second baseman, but I was, you know, I wasn't fat. I was, I liked to work out a lot. And so um, the next year I said, man, I hit 21 home runs. I'm going to hit 30 home runs next year. I'm going to come in like huge. I came in the camp at like 223. And although like I wasn't, again, I wasn't like, it wasn't a lot of bad weight. It was probably a l some bad weight. Um, but I just wasn't as quick and as fast when I was that big. I was probably a little bit too big and bulky for a second baseman to be 223 pounds. And uh, literally our manager said that to me. I think he was half joking and half not. I don't think he was really saying I was fat. I think he was just saying like, dude, like stop trying to get humongous. You're a second baseman. Um, so that he said that to me and, uh, and I went down. So basically you go out, you clean out your locker and in spring training, you're going to go from the big league clubhouse to the minor league clubhouse. And again, this usually takes place like really late in spring training. There's different cuts. So like there's like an early cut. There's a cut kind of in the middle and there's a cut late. You know, the first time I got sent down, I think it was kind of earlier on, maybe like that middle cut. And again, you just go clean out your stuff and you, and you head on over. Um, and like with the Padres, the minor league clubhouse was in the same building. It was like literally down a hall. So you grab your stuff, you go down a hall and you go right into the new clubhouse. And then they are you know, usually like, hey, pick a locker or they have a locker assigned to you. You just toss your stuff in there. Boom. And you go right out to minor league camp and you spend about a week or two in minor league camp. And then you go off to play AAA or whatever level it is you're going to. Not everyone gets sent down to AAA. Some guys get that sent down to double A. So it just depends. Um, I was always sent from big league, the big league team in spring training to AAA. Um, but later on in your career, in my career, you know, there were times where I had a chance to make the major league team. So I made, so like in 2008, I got called up. And when I went to spring training in 2009, like it was my goal to make the team. And I had like a legitimate, at least I think I had a legitimate shot of making the team. And I had a pretty good spring training. And then in 2010, I had my best spring training. And I thought maybe in 2010, I was going to make the team um, out of spring training. And I did not make it both of those years. I got, well, 2010, I broke my... 
I broke my hand like at the end of spring training. I ended up getting put in the DL. But in 2009, especially, like I thought maybe I could make it. Um, and so those times are a little bit tougher because like you're on the bubble and you're and when you get that call, you're like, you know, it, it gets you down because you know you're going back to AAA. Um, and especially when I was with the Orioles one year, I signed with the Orioles in 2011. I was on their 40-man roster, and I was brought in to compete for a spot, and I thought I had a chance to make the team. I didn't have a great spring training. Um, you know, that was the year I was coming off my broken hand that following year, and so I didn't, I just didn't come in super sharp. But still, like, you're hopeful that hope maybe you can, you know, maybe you'll make a team as, as something, as a utility guy or whatever. And same thing with the Orioles. You get called in. You walk in and, you know, Buck Joe Walter's in there. And I think actually Buck was the only one in there when I was with the Orioles and I spoke with him. And he basically, again, tells you kind of what's going on when you're heading down. You know, you're going to go to AAA. We're going to have you starting here. This is the position. This is what we foresee for you, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so that's how it works usually in like a spring training setting when you get sent down. Um, now, when you get into the regular season, again, I don't have a ton of experience because I went my first – you know, bunch of years without, you know, I was a pretty high prospect, I was a high draft pick. And so, you know, I never got cut or released, I should say, during the season. But the first time I got released was when I was with the Yankees. I got released at the very end of the season. Um, we were playing in uh, Pawtucket against the Pawtucket Red Sox. And so we were home. Uh, well, home for me because I'm from Massachusetts. So, you know, it's in Rhode Island. It's only like a 45 minute drive or so to home. And uh, I was injured, weird. Um, and so, you know, I just, I literally just come off the DL. I was on the DL for a long time. And then I was healthy and we didn't have enough roster spots. And so I had to kind of wait. And I had an idea that I might be, you know, I don't know if I'm going to last the whole season. So we get the Pawtucket and same thing, I'm, I'm, you know, we hit BP, I come in, I sit down and all of a sudden the trainer comes over and says, hey, uh, Skip wants to see you in the office. And you're like, shit. Um, and so go in the office and, you know, that, like I said, I, I kind of saw that one coming um, and they just let me know, like, listen, you know, you've been banged up a little bit, you haven't played a ton, but, you know, we're going to go in this direction and we're, we're going to release you. And that's it. Boom. Done shake everyone's hand, thank you very much, you walk out, and you know sometimes the guys can kind of sense when it's gonna happen if they see you get called in the manager's office. Not that it, they only call you in the release you, but um, a lot of times it does happen. And so you come out and everyone starts to come over and they're like, hey man, like what's going on? And you say, hey, I just got released. And literally you just kind of go through the clubhouse, you give everyone, you know, uh, you shake their hand, you give them a hug, you know, whatever, you say your goodbyes. And the strangest part about getting released is you don't know if you'll ever see anyone again that is on that team. And most times you don't. Like, so, like, I think about that the Yankees team I was on, AAA. I don't know if I've seen any of those guys again since then. Because, you know, there's very few guys from Massachusetts that are playing professional baseball. And so it's very rare you're going to see, you know, and I'm not just going to be walking in a grocery store and see somebody. So, like, you know, there's some buddies of mine like from my early career like with the Padres that I'll see because you know I built a pretty long relationship with them because I played with them for five years but like when I was in New York you come in I played for you know I was with the Orioles got traded to the Yankees and then you know played with the guys for two months and then bang done and so a lot of those guys I never you know I never ever saw again um, and the weird part is when you're in pro ball and you're playing it's every day. Like you don't really have days off. So just imagine if you went somewhere and you saw the same people for 10 hours a day, every single day for like months and months and months, or sometimes even years. And then all of a sudden, when you don't, all of a sudden you show up one day to work and they say, you're not coming here anymore. <laughs> Done. You never see them again. It's very strange when it happens. It hits you real quick if you don't expect it. Um, and so that's how it happened. You know, my first time getting released and I, Jumped in my car, and uh, actually, I think that time I had my wife come and get me. She picked me up and drove me home, and that was it. And uh, I ended up having to go get my car, I think. Yeah, because my car was, was my car out there that year? Yeah, my car was out there. So I ended up having to drive all the way to our minor league complex about six hours away to get my car and drive back. So um, that was the first time. Second time I was released was the following year. I was with the Indians. 
I'm playing with them. Um, I'm in AAA. We go play the Pawtucket Red Sox. I take my batting practice. I come into the clubhouse. A trainer comes over and says, hey, Skip wants to see you. I'm like, no freaking way. I'm going to get released in Pawtucket again. So I walk into the clubhouse and um, our manager says, hey, man, like, listen, you know, right now, roster, blah, 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 same talk every time. You know, we're going to have to release you. Uh, but here's the thing. We can release you now because you're close to home. You can, you know, pack up your, your stuff and you can head home. Or you can stay with us for maybe another week and we're going to release you then. But we don't know, you know, you might be back in Columbus. You might be, you know, we don't know where you're going to be. And so, you know, you might make it another week or so, but then we're going to release you there. And I was sitting there. I had to make the decision in like 10 seconds, five seconds. And I sat there and I was like, I just got released. Why would I want to stay on the team for another week to get released? So I was like, I'm good. I'm like, I, uh, you know, I was like, I agree. I'm home. You know, I'll take my release now. Shake everyone's hand. Same thing. It was like literally the exact same scenario a year later in the same exact place. So the last two times I've been to Pawtucket to play, I got released both times. Um, went out in the clubhouse, say, said my goodbyes to everyone. Now, the only difference between that time and the time before, any other time before, is at this point I was like 28 or 29 years old, and I was injured a little bit again, and I was on the Phantom DL for a while, and it was just like, I just had a sense that like, this is it, like this probably is going to be the last time I play baseball. And so that's a little bit of a different feeling because, um, you know, when you play, I play baseball since I was five years old and now I'm 28 or 29, I can't remember how old I was. And it's like, you've played for 25 years and then all of a sudden it's like, boom, career done, see you later, gone. They're like, again, it happens really, really fast. And I could have continued to play and like in the, I got a lot of independent ball questions and, and stuff like that. But, you know, I decided to, here's the thing, I was banged up. We made a video on this before. I really banged up, had three surgeries on my hand and wrist, wasn't playing a lot, wasn't playing very well, couldn't practice a lot. I was always in pain. And so I just said, if I can't be the player that I really want to be or need to be, if I can't get back to the major leagues, then I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to do it. Like I got to either do it full, fully committed and know that I have a chance, or if I don't think I have a chance, I'm done. So I decided not to go play independent ball and boom, I was done. I went right into college coaching. And so um, you know, that's how it goes. And again, those guys, those Indians guys that I became friends with, I don't know if I've seen any of them since then either. So there's a lot of guys, you know, you have friendships and then they just cut off immediately is the strangest part about it. And then obviously when you're done playing baseball, you know, you go from playing 25 straight years to you don't play anymore, um, which is, which is different and odd. Um, so that's how it goes and it goes different for everybody. You know, some guys get released right off the bat A lot of guys that get signed and like they play for a month boom They're done career over like one month and then you got other guys, you know play for the same team for a long time get cut um, so everyone's a little bit different, but Hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into at least what I went through um, And what a lot of guys go through and so like they say you see a lot of times on TV guys are like hey man It's a business like that you start to feel like that when you play because your whole life business is like a game and then all of a sudden it's weird when it's your job and they can say like you're fired you're fired you're fired you're fired like all of a sudden it like really does become very much business like that's why when i watch and if you ask my wife like when we watch baseball she's always like i don't enjoy baseball anymore it's too much of a business because like you see the other side of it and how you can just lose your job like that and it just changes your thought on the game a little bit so let me know if you have any questions um, thank you again for writing in and giving me this uh, suggestion. Um, check out the description box below again real quick. You get that link 50% off for your uh, first play crate. I've got a bunch of books and training tools. The link's down there that we use with all of our players. I think you guys will enjoy. Check out our Instagram, Antony Baseball. Our Twitter feed, Matt Antony 9. We're posting videos all the time for you guys. Check out our website, AntonyBaseball.com. Learn more about our teams and how to work with our staff. And that's all i got for you guys. Thank you so much again for watching, and we'll talk to you later.